Hey there, how are you? If you've been working on IoT projects lately, especially with ThingsBoard, and you've realized you need a faster way to set up your dev environment without relying on external services, setting up ThingsBoard with Docker on your own machine could be really helpful. Before you launch your project into production, having a solid dev environment is super important. It helps you catch any issues early on, so things run smoothly when you're ready to go live. So, if you're in this situation and want to make your development process smoother, then you should check out this video. All right, the first thing we're going to do is go to the documentation. There we'll find a section on how to install things board using Docker. I'll leave the link in the video description. Cool, one very important thing is that we need you to already have Docker installed on your computer. You can install it by following the Docker documentation. Docker offers many advantages. It simplifies app development and deployment by packaging them into containers with dependencies, ensuring consistent performance across environments. It also provides flexibility and scalability for managing apps in various environments. Now, what we're going to do is open our terminal. And then we're going to create a folder that we'll call tbdocker. Perfect, now we open Visual Studio Code. Once we have Visual Studio Code open, we need to create a file as indicated in the documentation. This file will contain all the necessary details and commands needed to deploy our application using Docker. It's like a set of instructions that Docker follows to set up our environment just the way we want it. Then we create a Docker Compose file. Then we copy the code from the documentation and paste it into our file. Then we open our console in Visual Studio Code. Now, before running the Docker Compose, we need to create two Docker volumes. Copy and paste the Docker volume create MYDB data. According to the documentation, we need to create one for MYDB data and another for MYDB logs. After creating the volumes, we can execute the Docker Compose up. Well, now we just have to wait for the Docker images to download. It's worth noting that this will take a bit of time because it's the first time we're running this and the images aren't downloaded yet. Afterwards, it will be much faster. Perfect. Now that we have the images downloaded and Docker Compose up and running, we can open things board. We just need to find the address and port. If we check our Docker on Windows, we can see that ThingsBoard is running on our local host at port 8080. Perfect, now we have ThingsBoard running in a Docker container. All we need to do is log in with an email and password, which can be found in the ThingsBoard documentation. As you can see here, ThingsBoard provides us with three sets of credentials to use. We can log in as a system administrator, tenant administrator, or customer user. Let's try using the System Administrator account. Here we can see the dashboard for a System Administrator role. Now let's try using the Tenant Administrator account. Perfect, as you could see, we now have a different dashboard. Now, to run some tests, we can create a device and make sure everything is working okay. I'm going to create a test device. Then I'll check the connection to ensure that the devices can send data and things board can receive it.
Great. Now that we have created a device, we can also create a dashboard. I'm going to create a test dashboard. Then I'm going to create an entities table widget from my device. Perfect. Now I'm going to create a time series to visualize the data in real time. Now that we've got everything set up, we can test it out by simulating data transmission from our device using the terminal. Awesome! As you can see on our dashboard, the data is being received and our widgets are updating in real time. Isn't that incredible? If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. Good luck with your upcoming projects. Bye.